This presentation is based on a workbook for arguments, third edition by David Morrow and Anthony Weston. We're going to look at rule 33 from that book, which is considering alternative positions to an issue. So considering alternatives means looking at other possible positions on the issue. Even if you show that your position is uh, something that has some benefit if it's put into action or it has some reason to support it, in order to justify it effectively, you need to show that it has more reason in support of it than other positions or that it has more expected net benefits or other principles of action um, support it more effectively than other positions. So for example, if the issue is what should the US immigration policy be, you wanna be able to consider alternative proposals. If your initial position is that the US should um, increase its uh, permitted immigration to allow people to settle here permanently to make a contribution to the economy, you wanna be able to show that that's a better proposal than allowing guest workers. A guest worker program would be where you allow workers to settle temporarily, but they aren't given permanent legal status in the country. So these are some tips or ways for how to consider alternatives. One, imagine a perfect or ideal solution and you work your way backward to something more practical or, or actionable. So if you're looking at the issue of immigration from a purely economic lens, there are other lenses, other values as well, such as people's rights to migrate and so forth. But if you're looking at that issue from an economic perspective, you might say, okay, what would our, our labor market look like if it were ideally efficient, if it were ideally competitive or something like that? And then what immigration policy does that suggest? Is it something that you're currently considering or is it another policy, another position you had not yet considered? Two, consider how this particular problem, this particular issue has been addressed or viewed in other times or places. So for example, you can look at immigration policies that are currently being enacted in other um, nations or other unions like China, the European Union, or Singapore, just to name a couple of examples. Or you could look at policies that were previously enacted in other times, such as what was the US immigration policy 100 years ago and how effective was it? Three, reframe the problem as a symptom of a deeper issue. Now this will depend, it's not always gonna be relevant, but if you're looking at the problem of what should the US immigration policy be, this could be related to a deeper economic issue of how should labor, labor markets be regulated. If you can make a case that labor markets in general should have um, be open to increases in supplies of labor, that could be relevant to the particular question of immigration because immigration in part affects the question, uh, relates to the question of labor supply. Another example, do people have a human right to migrate? You can frame the question of immigration in terms of this broader human right to migration. So maybe you initially were conceiving it rather narrowly or from a purely economic perspective. If people have a general right to migrate or a presumption in favor of migrating or moving to where they choose, that's gonna bear very heavily on the question of US immigration policy in particular.